Chapter 1. Establishing Expectations The bulk of this book is about nuts and bolts, how to block, tackle, and give and take a handoff. But none of that matters if you cannot establish a firm foundation for your program. Nothing breeds winning like the expectation of winning. Finishing second may work in a marathon, but the player who finishes second on a football field is the one that gets run over. If you make excellence your expectation and consistently enforce that expectation, you will create a winning program. In a youth football program, there are three facets that set the tone for success. Parents, players, and coaches. I cannot emphasize this point enough. You cannot win if you do not expect and demand it. This does not mean standing on the sidelines during the game and yelling and screaming because your players aren't winning. The game field is the last place to try to install this ethos. If you haven't properly prepared your team to succeed before you take the field, then reacting poorly when they play poorly only alienates the player and makes it impossible for you to build the spirit decor that your team needs for success. You instill a winning mindset from day one, on the practice field, in team meetings, and in meetings with parents. All of our football seasons begin the same way, with a meeting. This meeting is with the students wishing to play and their parents. At this meeting, we make several things clear. One, we are here to teach your child how to safely play the game of football. Two, we will treat your child like we treat our children. You may not like how we treat our children, but we will treat yours like we do ours. Three, our job is to teach the game safely and to win football games. We expect to win. Four, we will not discuss playing time. Playing time decisions belong only to coaches. We will discuss with you how to help your child get better, but we will decide who plays, when they play, and how much they play. Five. We do not discuss playing time primarily because all of the players are our responsibility and we do not want to put anyone in a position to get hurt. If we feel that your child could get hurt or that their lack of game understanding could endanger a teammate, then they will not be on the field. This is the first step in setting expectations, getting the parents to understand the level of commitment it requires to become a football player. Even if the parents are athletes or former athletes, most of them never played football and do not grasp that it can be different from other sports. During the meeting, we stress that we are always available to the parents, except the time just before and after a game, when emotions can cloud the judgment of both parents and coaches. We also tell parents our one loss record from the previous year and an approximation of our career win-loss record. Parents are preparing to put their child into a very physical sport where the threat of serious injury is very real. They need to know how qualified you are to guide their child through that process, and they need to know if you care enough about their child to address their concerns when they arise. If parents understand your philosophy, then they will work with you to help build their child. This meeting also underscores to the athlete that this experience will be different that they will be responsible to their teammates and that if they fail in that responsibility, they will not be on the field very much. Coaching and teaching in middle school, it sometimes seems the kids lose everything. Our first step after the parent meeting is to hand out equipment and to instruct the players on how to get dressed for practice since most have never put on full pads. The first thing they notice is that everything is numbered. Helmets, shoulder pads, girdles, practice pants, knee, hip, and thigh pads. They must sign for their equipment. It is their job to keep up with it. If they lose a thigh pad before practice, then they aren't properly equipped and cannot practice. We will issue them replacement pads, but not until after practice. If they don't practice, they don't play. This seems petty, but it saves a tremendous amount of practice time since we aren't spending it running around looking for a thigh pad for a running back or a defensive tackle's practice pants. More importantly, it teaches the players the level of responsibility we expect of them. For the first week or so, we lead them onto the field for practice. They have 15 minutes to get dressed and be ready to practice. If everyone isn't ready to run warm-up laps in 15 minutes, then we run extra laps 
so that we learn to be on time. Then we line them up, with the line leaders usually called from returning players, and begin stretching exercises. We do each exercise precisely. If some do it wrong or aren't participating fully, we do the exercise again. We do this until we get all the exercises done properly by all the players, whether it takes 20 minutes or 2 hours. We do not accept less than full effort or partial completion. Because everyone is responsible for doing it correctly, the players quickly learn that they are responsible to each other. We know we are going to have a good team when we see our team leaders getting the players out on the field and going through warm-ups correctly without waiting on us. The final component in establishing expectations deals with you and the rest of your coaching staff. Ever watch a game and wonder why some coaches get results with seemingly little or no effort, while others might scream and shout until they are blue in the face with no results? It's simple. Players, particularly at this age, emulate what they see. It will do you no good to try to set expectations for parents or players if you do not live those same expectations. I often sit and watch games where coaches are yelling and screaming at players for turnovers, missed assignments, or botched plays. Yet that coach never starts practice on time, doesn't completely understand the offense and defense his coordinators run, doesn't spend practice time on fundamentals, and sometimes cannot even name all of the players on his team. What did he expect to see during the game? More importantly, how is he building a platform for success? You and your staff must embody your expectations. If you work hard every day, so will your players. When the players see you and the other coaches studying, working, and sweating, then they will emulate you. If you take the time to scout opponents, watch game film, and explain the game to your team, then players and parents will listen and respond. If they see you show up late, leave early, not paying attention to details, or not working to perfect performance, then they will emulate that as well particularly with young players that may have never been on a team, you must show them what it means to be dedicated to the team, to the game, and to each other. Perhaps a brief story will illustrate the point. My wife often comes to watch us play. I had just moved to a new school where we were playing our first game. A fan who had not spent much time around practice was sitting next to her. He kept screaming to try to get my attention because he felt we were vulnerable if the other team decided to throw a deep route on their left. Our corner on that side was small, about 5 foot and 95 pounds. He had no safety help over the top. My wife finally turned to the fan and said, My husband has watched hours of film on that team. In three years, they haven't thrown a pass to the left. His response? Oh. They didn't throw a pass to the left that day, and we stuffed their run game and route to an easy win. After the game, he came up to say what a great job we had done on defense. My wife just chuckled. Just as you must demonstrate the work ethic you wish your team to have, you must consistently reinforce it on every area. If you coach middle school or junior high school, then you must be a member of that school family. You must interact with the other teachers to monitor the progress of your players. If you coach recreational football or Pop Warner, ask about school. Let them know that the expectations for excellence extend beyond the field. Your players can't be leaders on the field if they aren't leaders off of it. It just doesn't work that way. And nothing is sadder than watching a talented football player lose the game he loves because he can't succeed in class or is drawn to bad influences. Our players know that we expect them to be leaders in the classroom and hallways and that we will be monitoring them on a daily basis. We address behavior issues immediately and there is a zero tolerance policy for poor behavior in school. If they struggle academically, we do everything we can to find them help they need. We are trying to build character. And character doesn't exist just between the white lines. Rarely we have taken the field with a size, speed, or athleticism advantage. Although we have had a few elite individual athletes, we usually find ourselves at a disadvantage in terms of overall size and talent. Even so, we have won using Florida's spread offense, the Oregon spread offense, the wishbone, and the flex. We have one running the option. We have one throwing the ball all over the field. The one constant is our expectation of success. We expect to win, and we are prepared to work until we are good enough to achieve that goal. Expectations are the cornerstone of your program. Everyone wants to win.
The difference between those teams that win and those that don't is simple. A winning team prepares to win. They understand that the game is an extension of all their preparation, dedication, and hard work. Because they are willing to prepare and work hard, they are confident that they are prepared to win. Don't be afraid of setting high expectations for young players. But when you set those expectations, be prepared to lead by example. Your players do not know how to compete, how to play efficiently, or how to win. They are young people just beginning to understand the nature of sports in general and football in particular. This is your job to show them how to be safe and successful as competitors. In order to build a platform for their future success and your success as a team, you must set expectations with parents, with players, and among the coaches. You are their expert. They will watch and emulate you. Set the tone, set expectations, and you are on your way to a safe and successful program.